When I was a kid, I remember taking a look at my first book and wondering how it was made. I looked at the pages and I saw the page numbers and the pictures and uh, I was never quite sure how all of it was done. I recall the next thing that I did was trying to make my own makeshift book and I presented it at class. It was a Halloween book and I showed it, uh, demonstrated it, and kind of told the story at the same time. I um, was pretty excited that the entire class sat around interested in what, something that I made. Um, I wasn't satisfied from this event, though, because I knew that my book still didn't look like the professionally made book and so I wanted to learn more uh, this obsession drove me to f seek answers that would eventually lead me to technology in the IT field and one particular day, my family had just purchased its first PC computer. And I remember taking a look at it and just being mesmerized about how similar it looked like a television set. But I knew it wasn't a television set. It was something much more special and the same feeling that I had with the book resonated with the PC I uh, spent hours uh, just trying to see what it could do but at the same time uh, being safe enough not to break it because despite being a, a youth, I understood that a lot of money went into this purchase. And uh, eventually, um, after some time, computers would fall off the radar of, on my interests. And I wouldn't have caught the fire back again until I was in high school where I met my mentor who, who majored in IT. And he taught me what computers were capable of and uh, my passion for it resurfaced uh, presently I am taking notice of the 3d printer and its uses in our society I've read magazine articles about how the 3d printer can print homes it can print uh, Anything that that you set your mind to, it seems. Uh, cause lately, I've uh, heard that even organs can be printed out from the 3D printer, which is quite fascinating. Um, and some recent news is some gun owners are using 3D printers to print their own gun models and these are functioning. And so I uh, am looking forward to 
what new things we find with the 3D printer that will change society again. Um, I would say what inspired me first was going to school and having like those letters that you would pass back and forth between friends and I really liked writing one of my best friends and we would write a lot of times to each other and we would start drawing and just like writing our own little stories inside of our notes. When I was young it would have to be a computer. I was around second, third grade. Well second grade I was introduced to them but we didn't know what you know we were on but until like my third grade year or so we're on these um, colorful Macintosh computers which really looked cool back then uh, that really fascinated me because whenever we had this computer time we'd go to another building get on a computer and do these um typing sessions and with that it was really new to me because I didn't know you could do homework and work on the computer because by then I didn't know what a computer was used for. So as a start that's why I wanted to talk about the computer. Well, do you recall anything in your youth that uh, you looked at and you wondered uh, how does this work or you know what this is very interesting I'd like to know more about. Mm, yeah. Um, could you explain like what that particular item is? Yeah, it was um, again, my mom had a lot of National Geographic magazines laying around and so whenever we have like time to ourselves we would look through and stuff like that and there's a lot of these great photos that I saw. My favorite one, there was, there was this book that was on mountains and how how the images were on the mountains were like really I really loved to take like I really enjoyed it a lot because the, the photo the landscape of the mountains everything it was just so <clears throat> amazing to me I really enjoyed it a lot and I was and I, I wanted to like recapture what those people did in the photo now, how much of this do you think influenced your journey um, into photography? I think it influenced me a lot because over the years I got better and better at it and I finally, well not an expert, not a pro, but it really helped me to take a lot of decent good photos with just the stuff that I have. So. Because you saw great quality photos compared to sloppier photos. And one of my good photographers, one of my favorite photographers is actually one of my favorite singers, like favorite artists, like, mm. like I guess, yeah, she, her father took amazing photographer skills and amazing photos that he shared with me, he, that he shared on Facebook and I really enjoyed those a lot. And then, like man, out of all the photographers I seen take pictures, like even, even my own siblings, like his is just like just perfect, clear. The color is just perfect and everything. And I just really admire his work a lot. And that's what helped me. That's what made me, I guess, going more into photography. Okay. We, um, what upgraded from that would, I would say what inspired me next was the iPod touch afterwards because we would save notes whenever we would borrow each other's iPods sometimes and we would kind of, you know, like, we would write the notes and give each other the iPod downloading new music and, and like sharing stuff. 
with each other. And then after that, our communication started to change a little bit more once like we were able to have a phone. And we started to text each other, but we would still have like the notebook on the side, but slowly the notebook started to fade away because we had our phones more. And we would start to play, like, we would start to, hold on, sorry. We would start to message each other a lot more and it was inspiring to me because the way that communication changed over time, we went from writing in a notebook to, you know, like getting, like sharing things with each other in your phones and after that it became like an iPod touch and we would be able to get onto the internet from there too and it was really really cool and after that like they started to come out with smartphones when we started to get really older and that like has been the main use of um, technology that I've come to now always with my phone all the time t talking to people and also keeping like updates on things and when you go a day without your phone it feels really really weird but you can still do it but it just feels very odd because everything is in your phone now it went from just having just t text messages and calls to making future plans on your calendar date and making reminders and then staying connected online with everybody and just having more connection to the world. Because that's really intriguing to me because I seen a photo of like the first computer which was 1930s, 40s, or 50s, and it's just like a big warehouse. <laughs> and the other photo that shocked me on that too was they had this 5 megabyte memory. But the thing about this 5 megabyte, this big old block, a machine that weighed 2 tons, was only 5 megabytes. And nowadays you can get a micro SD card with what? close to 512 gigabytes and we're getting close enough to making a terabyte on a nano size chip which is really a big difference from the technology then and it is now so that's what I really like to I like on the computers because every year it's constantly changing to performance to looks portability and prices on that too because it is still expensive to purchase a computer but depending on the computer you want performance and needs is what causes the prices to go up. Photography caught my eye when I was a young kid. Now why, why was it do you think or could you just go into death why? Because my first camera I ever got was during Christmas time when I was in middle school. So my mom got it for me for Christmas and I slowly took pictures here and there just for fun. But then over time I really enjoyed it and I started taking a lot of good photos over the years. I would say, I know it seems weird, but books have become more interesting to me ever since I've been, you know, like day in and day out, it's, you still have your phone and you can watch movies on your phone, you can do whatever, but for some reason to me, like, I like just opening a book and reading it and getting into your own world from there. And why is that? because the stories that are shared are very, very interesting and it just pulls you into a different as, a different kind of world. As compared to online reading? Yeah, definitely. Why would you think that would be the case? When 
you're reading online, it's it just feels more simple because you're just flipping the page like on your phone, but it doesn't feel the same. So you feel yeah. more intimate with uh, with a book. With a book because it's almost like you're there and you're kind of like do deep deep exploring. Yeah, it's or, a lot more. I feel a lot more connected when I read a book and you even you don't have to worry about losing like your phone connection or Wi-Fi connection all you have to do is put a bookmark where you left off last and then continue you think if they made a hologram book that you would maybe uh, leave the physical book again possibly because that would be pretty cool <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, thank you for this, your time, and uh, that concludes our interview. What's your, as of now, what's your current uh, new media that you are taking an interest in? No, uh, just remember that new media uh, isn't always digital. Well. Uh, let me uh, rephrase that. Digital is not always new media, but new media is digital. Uh, so, uh, with that being said, um, is there any forms of new media that you're taking an interest in? Mm -hmm. As of now? As of now, I might have to lay back on computers again. Uh, the reason why I'm going back to the computers is like what I said earlier about it. Computers nowadays are becoming slimmer, thinner, faster, and stronger. Right. So, uh, right as this moment, what is there any new news on the computers that is catching your eye? As of now, not really. Other than they're just improving the resolution format of um, screens. Uh, somewhat now. 4K is going to be the default screen resolution. Uh, when I think about it, back then, when we used to use the composite video, that was standard. Mm -hmm. Then when HD came around, there was only 480p, 720, and 1080p, which was also standard. And now we're going to the age where 4K is standard, and it's making 1080p look like the standard like 480i, mm -hmm. 1080, 480p. And now they're now they're going to go up more to the 8K resolution, and there's also a 16K, which is kind of new, interesting. But the, I really don't see why we need to have more resolution on computer screens now mm -hmm. rather than performance. But then again, with the higher resolutions and anything we can use in a medical field, it can take higher resolutions of images, patients, mm -hmm. eye. Then from there we can actually like zoom in and see more details. But that's the only new media I would say I'm currently looking into on, which I'm against and this against about the resolution of now is becoming standard. Okay. Thank you for your time and uh, that'll do it for our interview. Thank you. Now, um, in your uh, current, cause currently, um, is there uh, any new media that you're setting your eyes on, or um, has photography still remained? Um, your main focus of interest. Mm -hmm. Photography is other medias. I'm not really too interested in other ones. It's not now. <laughs> hmm. But if something came close, what would you say that is? Big filming. Film. Like filming from a hand handheld device. I've seen some YouTubers do that. And you're just curious how they get the clear, crisp quality, like the f photography as well, huh? 
uh, handheld is just more cheaper than the just the expensive. No, oh, yeah. And uh, I've uh, I've had some uh, interest in photography as well. And from what I've learned is that you don't really need an expensive camera, but you mostly need like an understanding of how the camera works, such as shutter and I could go on on the technicalities, but uh, do you feel like uh, like uh, we're on the verge of any new devices that might make photography easier for you? Mm -hmm. Could you name a, a product that um, is new in photography that uh, you've seen? New iPhone. <laughs> New iPhone. Like that. Like it has zoom and ultra wide or whatever and wide and it's just like it's just amazing how far people come with technology and, and that that alone I can understand. Like if I if I was to take pictures from an iPhone, the new one, currently new one now, then yeah, I'm, I might possibly be that good. Yeah, again, that's cheaper. And mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you for your time. Uh, that'll do it for our interview. Mm -hmm. Thanks for having me. After viewing the interviews, uh, one thing that I wanted to answer is that uh, from Benjamin Peters article, uh, new isn't really new, is the theme for this video. If you've taken notice that the three participants mention things that humans do, and that is use a tool to complete a task. And although the device is new and the way the task is done is new, it's still completing the task in a way that uh, is similar to old media. And just want people to uh, hopefully get something out of this uh, and I hope you enjoyed the presentation I look forward to your feedback and I hope we have a good day before I forget the references that I have used for this project is uh, reference to uh, Benjamin Peters. Uh, all the drawings and animations were completed by me, and I did use uh, Pixel Bay for uh, free stock photos for royalty photos. So um, I hope you enjoyed.